I'm Matt Dixon, and welcome to the Purple Patch Podcast. The mission of Purple Patch is to empower and educate every human being to reach their athletic potential. Through the lens of athletic potential, you reach your human potential. The purpose of this podcast is to help time-starved people everywhere integrate sport into life. In today's show, we're going to be talking about pro athletes. In fact, we're going to be talking about the Purple Patch Pro Squad and how we managed to create sustained high performance over so many years. And a big part of the ingredients of our success came around prioritization and focusing on the key things that could really drive the performance needle. One of the tools that we leverage at Purple Patch to help us on this journey is Inside Tracker. By taking a look inside and assessing your biometrics and then combining it with the advice and recommendations from the team of experts and scientists at Inside Tracker, you can get prioritization, focus, and ensure that you are taking action on the things that are going to help absolutely help you to build a platform of health and ultimately to thrive in whatever your endeavor is. All you need to do to take part in this nice journey is head to insidetracker.com slash purple patch and you can use this code purple patch pro 20 that's purple patch pro 20 and that's going to give you 20 percent off everything at the store all right it's a good one today folks professional athletes there's nothing more inspirational but there's also a suite of lessons to help you apply to your own performance journey enjoy the show And welcome to the Purple Patch Podcast. As ever, your host, Matt Dixon. And today we are going to discuss the long history of the Purple Patch Pro Squad. And guess what? It relates to you. Yes, you. If you're interested in improving your performance and results, and then today's stories can significantly imprint your mindset and your own approach to paving your pathway to success. Now, you might be listening today as an athlete or perhaps you're a leader of a team or organization. You might be a coach, or you might just be simply someone that's looking to live better for longer and do all that you can do to control living your best life. Now, today's show has got a little bit of supporting materials, or perhaps another way to look at it is I'm gonna give you some homework to do once you finish listening to the show. If you head to purplepatchfitness.com and head up to the education tab, under there, there's a little title that says methodology. And I encourage you to go there and have a nice read of that page. The good news is it's going to be pretty interesting and a pretty fun read. We're also going to add the link in the show notes, of course. But if you want to shortcut it right now, you can just head to purplepatchfitness.com slash our dash methodology. And that's going to lead you right to the page. That page is going to take you through the journey, results, highlights, and lessons of more than 15 years of me guiding athletes to the very highest level of performance. It's all about the story of the Purple Patch Pro Squad. Now, I think you're going to enjoy the page, but also I believe that you're going to find it insightful and pretty valuable to your own journey. In this show today, my ambition is to go beyond that web page and extend the conversation a little bit. And I'm going to hone in on three key lessons that I believe were central to these amazing collection of athletes having great success over such a long duration. The three main elements are going to be focused on three words. Those three words are becoming, that's the first word, and that's the collective mindset that drove our internal success. The second word is team. And I'm going to break out the importance of a team approach within a very individual sport. And finally, the third word, practices. The practices and skills beyond the training for the triathletes, the swim, bike, and run, that ultimately drove effectiveness and, I believe, our performance gains. Now, this is going to be not the only time that we refer to this really fun and important page of our history of coaching. As you read the story and the lessons on the page, you're going to probably realize that beneath these results and the snapshot lessons and some of the summaries that we go through are countless individual stories of success. So what I thought we would do over the coming weeks and months is I intend to dig deeper 
And I'm going to highlight many of the individual athletes that you're going to read about on this page and reveal what I believe are really valuable insights into elite performance and success. Each story will reveal radical lessons on things like mindset, approach, management of adversity, how to receive and provide feedback, and even a little bit of humor along the way. It's going to be pretty fun. But today, I want to kick us off with three key lessons. Now, before we get going, we are going to go back to the ukulele. Barry, it is your time, my friend. Grab the microphone, grab the ukulele. It is time for Word of the Week. It's a goodie today. We like the way he thinks, serious with a wink. Let's open the book, it's time to take a peek. It's the Dictionary Word of the Week. Yes, folks, Word of the Week this week, and we're going to label this coaching. With me, yes, your opportunity every week to be coached by me on the bicycle. Yes, this is one that I'm proud of. Are you interested in bike school? Oh, what's that, you might ask? Well, it is the opportunity for you to get coached by me on the bike every single week. And I promise I will help you boost your power, your resilience in riding, but also refine your technical skills and teach you how to get the best speed return for any fitness that you have. You can benefit from the live sessions that we have where I directly coach you through a live bike session or, of course, via the on-demand video-based sessions where you gain all of the coaching and technical advice that we have. You just don't get the abuse live with me. The best part, all of this is available to you no matter where you live. Hey, you're in the Bay Area? Terrific. Come and join me and train with me live in the Performance Center where I'm recording this session right now. But this morning's live session, well, we had athletes from all over the world. Kansas, Washington, Florida, New York, the United Kingdom, Switzerland, Denmark, Peru, Mexico, and beyond. We even welcome Meredith from Alabama, folks. Yes, that truly is all-encompassing. All athletes live and being coached via two-way video. Yes, yeah, scary, yes, I can see you at home training. Therefore, I can give you advice. Nigel, drop the shoulders, keep the leg speed up, Jemima. Anything that is gonna help you execute the session as I intend to get the most out of that session. And you will be connected to the platform that shows me your essential metrics in real time so I can track and give you feedback. It's coaching, it's the most effective bike training possible, and of course, all the while, you are connected to like-minded athletes in a real environment. It is the backbone of all Purple Patch coaching programs, but we're now able to offer the program as a standalone. That means that you can be self-coached and integrate this bike training into your own program. It also easily integrates into any coach program. And so if you're coached by someone else, if they feel like it might be valuable to you, these sessions are a great tool for you. And they work. They directly will make you a better athlete. All of the sessions, none of them are a la carte and random. It is a structured and progressive program. And I believe the secret to much of our success at Purple Patch in developing some of the world's strongest bike riders. All you need to do is head to a very easy to remember URL, purplepatchfitness.com slash bike. Yes, that's purplepatchfitness.com, the regular website slash bike. All available to you, this whole program, live coach session, all available to you at $59 a month. It's pretty nice. You get to have coffee. You get to get beaten up by me in multiple sessions weekly. I look forward to helping you. Oh, and by the way, if you're a coach listening to this and you would love to integrate these sessions into your athletes programs, reach out to us directly. Just ping us at the regular email, info at purplepatchfitness.com. Let us know that you're a coach and we can have a conversation. We would love to support your coaching and help you help others thrive. All right, here we go. Barry, it is time for the meat and potatoes.
Yes, it is the meat of potatoes, and today we are talking about the Purple Patch Pro Squad, some of the very best endurance athletes in the world. Collectively, when I reflect on the journey, they provided me with so many things. A collection of some of the very best coaching and life memories, a catalyst for great challenge and growth for me as a coach and also as a human being, an oil tanker's worth of lessons to me, the Purple Patch coaches, and also I would include the broader Purple Patch athlete population. We labeled this pro squad our living laboratory of performance lessons. And I wouldn't be here today talking on this show as the leader of Purple Patch if it wasn't for these athletes. And finally, inspiration. For me to keep seeking growth, to evolve, to improve, and to so many fans and passionate people of performance. So thank you so much. I feel like as a team and as a leader of the pro squad, we did this the right way. Each of these athletes unapologetically were chasing individual world-class performance, but we were determined to pursue that world-class performance from a platform of health. And I can confidently say that every Purple Patch Pro that I talk about and highlight today, individually and collectively, we trained, we raced clean. And that's something that we're really, really proud of. We built our whole squad on trust, commitment and support. And I often get asked, what was my proudest coaching moment? Or who my favorite athlete was? And so why don't I take the opportunity to answer that question right now? You know what I'm most proud of? I'm proud of having so many long-term coaching relationships. An elite sport, the athlete-coach relationship, the average athlete-coach relationship is under two seasons. Our average was more than six years. When you get to work with so many athletes closely over a long period of time, you end up growing together. You build lasting bonds that go well beyond sport and well beyond chasing elite performance. And for me as a human being, that's something that's really special. I'm also most proud of our record of long-term athlete development, including many athletes who started their journey with Purple Patch as amateurs and transcended to being truly world-class athletes. Newbies such as Jesse Thomas, Meredith Kessler, Sarah Kometo, Sarah Piampiano, and many, many more who delivered to true world-class excellence. And on top of that, I'm also proud of the squad's success of being equal amongst our male and female athletes. I believe that our approach fostered a really healthy mindset, a robust platform of health, and improved sporting results. And I believe that our racing results were better because of our team approach and a focus on elements that went well beyond just simply swim, bike, and run. And all of those reasons collectively led to better performances, whether or not it was a male athlete or a female athlete. And so as you read the stories on the website, that's one of the things that really cements my pride in the, leading this pro squad. These are the things that I'm most proud of, not any single result or championship. And so far as favorites, of course, I didn't have any favorites. Although little poo, you know that you really were my favorite, don't you? With all of this in mind, I don't feel that I can dive into the lessons of today without acknowledging those who helped contribute to the fabric of the Purple Patch Pro Squad success. Now, bear with me. It's a list, but it's important that I go through the names that made up the Purple Patch Pro Squad. Now, as I do this, I know, I really surely know that I'm going to miss someone. I just know it. It's me. So here we go. And if I miss you, I'm so sorry, you know who you are, and it's not out of that I don't care. Here we go. Tyler Stewart, Kelly Couch, Lara Brown, James Cotter, Matt Lieto, Andrew Yoda, Chris Lieto, Luke Bell, Kevin Collington, Meredith Kessler, Emma Kate Lidbury, Rachel Joyce, Gina Crawford, Sarah Kometo, Jesse Thomas, Rasmus Henning, Lindsay Corbin, runner Ryan Hall, Sarah Piampiano, Tim Reed, Sam Appleton, David Kahn, and in your jeans, never in shorts, Holly Lawrence, Mohamed Lana, Chelsea Sodaro, Lena Toms, Martin Lower, and anyone who I somehow, somehow missed. 
Each of you is an important brick in the pathway to the results of the team. Now, some of you listening might be more familiar with some of those names over than others, but make no mistake, the Purple Patch Pro Squad was something in which every participant contributed, had a role and played a part in our more than 15 years of success. And so right now to each of you, thank you. All right, so let's get to the lessons. Those lessons that go beyond the web page, that pro methodology that we talked about. What were some of the drivers of the multiple world championships that we achieved? So many podiums and wins, Ironman and Ironman 70.3 events. Well, individually, each of the athletes that I just called out there had a certain talent level, of course. And it was really my role to take all of the necessary components and organize them to deliver each individual athlete to high sustained performance. That's a coach's role. And to answer the question, what were the drivers of success? You might anticipate that organizing those components and driving it towards success might be focused around words like commitment and toughness and hard work. But that's not what I'm gonna talk about today because I see those types of words as prerequisites, certainly not differentiators. In fact, I believe that anyone chasing world-class performance is likely gonna realize that the journey is tough and they better be tough to meet the demands. And they certainly need to be committed. And I can't imagine that anyone chasing world-class performance is gonna be afraid of a bit of hard work. These are just for me assumed. They're almost like just getting a ticket to the ball. It doesn't mean that you're gonna be under the spotlight. And so for me as a coach, I expect high commitment. I expect toughness. I anticipate that you're gonna work hard. What I want to dig into today is some of the key aspects that might surprise you that I feel like really drove our individual and collective success. Now, as I mentioned, I'm gonna anchor each of these lessons under a single word. So here we go, number one. Our first word is becoming, becoming. The Purple Patch Pro Squad had a really strong history of great individual results. But the interesting part of this is we seldom chased outcomes or results. An athlete might join or might kick off a season and they might say, this is my aspiration. I wanna be world champion. I wanna become an Ironman champion. And that's great. But we didn't revisit that on a daily basis. In fact, discussions about things like that, winning a world championship, quickly faded more into the subconscious. It was much more typical for each athlete to be driven by the pursuit of becoming the very best athlete that they could be. So they might dream of becoming a world champion, but their purpose, their driver, is becoming the best athlete that they could be. So instead of thinking about what does it take to win a world championship, instead, we aim to answer a common question. What are the actionable steps needed for you, the athlete, to improve? And I can confidently ten- tell you that each of these athletes I coach absolutely love to race and certainly celebrated victories. On top of it, we collectively mourned and suffered after defeats because that's part of sport. But our races and events, our goals that we establish, they were never an end goal. They were never a destination. And that's a big part of the reason that you hear us so often talk about that nice purple patch saying, embrace the journey. You see, each season, as a athlete and a coach, we would establish some race and performance goals. And these were really important. They created a structure and a framework to build our athletic development and performance development within. And so looming goal events, they had a nice anchor point of accountability, raising excitement, a little bit of anticipation, and of course, a yardstick of performance progression on the way. 
So we viewed the races as checkpoints along the journey, but they were never an end point. And in fact, the most important value of these race goals or performance goals that we established is ultimately what they enabled us to do. And the answer to that is they enabled us to lay out the necessary steps and actions required to achieve those goals. And the goals and the targets were the framework for us to prioritize, place our focus, and anchor point our actions that we were gonna take. And so this word becoming really helped as a driver. What are we becoming as an athlete? And it placed a sense of control. It also helped, that word becoming, it helped as a driver when it came to assessing or reviewing performance progress and race results, whether you win, lose, or draw. You see, when each athlete prioritized performance progression that were under the athlete control, then we were equipped to double down on those aspects that were leading to performance improvements. So the things that went really well or were done and executed really well, and then evolve change or adapt aspects that we feel like could have been done better, that were growth opportunities. And so in other words, it created a framework for us to become, to improve, to evolve, to drive forward on the good stuff, but to adapt and evolve the aspects that required improvement so that we could progress. Really what this came down to is enabling each athlete to have control. You can't control an outcome, but you can control your actions. And this was above all else, the driving mindset of every athlete that was a part of the Purple Patch Pro Squad. Get better, get better, get better. The mindset of becoming a driving force for all Purple Patch Pros. The second word that I think is really important for a driver of our collective success was team. It's a key lesson that I don't think can be overstated in its importance. Here are a collection of individual athletes, and each of them is chasing world-class performance in the most individual of sports. And they're a part of this squad where they're training alongside their own competition, the people that they're gonna be battling it out on race day to try and beat. And so what can team possibly have to do with any of that? Well, it turns out it has everything to do with that. The very first Purple Patch Pro that I coached was named Tyler Stewart. Now she had twice won the amateur division of the Hawaii Ironman World Championships and decided to step up and progress to the pro level. And over the initial years of my coaching of pros, I started to add a few more professional athletes and I treated them just as an island. I coached a collection of individuals. But after the initial two or three years, and I started to add more and more professional athletes, and I had the introduction of some really team-minded pros, and one that really bubbles up to mind is Matt Lieto. I started to realize and gain insight into the power of team. And it was really at that point, a few years into the journey, that I decided to shift from coaching a collection of individuals to really set up the Purple Patch Pro Squad. And from then on, I never felt like I was coaching individuals. Instead, I led a team. And in short order, I took an action as the leader of that team, as the coach of that team. I established a set of non-negotiables that for each team member had to adhere to in order to be a part of that squad. And it was really startlingly simple stuff. They had to participate at our regular training camps. And the reason for that is to get the, the athletes out of their regular training environment into an environment where they would train and live together. And we could unify under a common mindset, a unified approach and develop a sense of trust, accountability and support all of the components that are the bedrock of really effective teams. They also, as individual athletes that were a part of the team, 
had to adhere to a set of practices that would help them with focus and prioritization. On this show, you've heard me discuss the Sunday special before. It was actions like that, where they look ahead, came out of the weeds, could get some big picture thinking. They also had to be really regular with check-ins to help them with feedback and coachability, as well as coming out of the day-to-day with that big picture thinking. And they were a unified traits of habits that we labeled under the pro squad, nailing the basics, as we called it, that we believe would help provide them with consistent health, consistent high quality training, facilitate required recovery that we believed in, and ultimately be the baseline driver of sustained high performance. Now, there were a few other things as well, but we should remember that these actions, these non-negotiables help set the tone. And each of the individuals, remember, were different in their talent levels, their stage of development, their goals, even their distances sometimes that they were racing, but they were unified by a set of non-negotiables. And that fostered a team mindset, a sense of belonging, because each member was unified under a common mindset, a set of practices, and it set the tone for the squad. And this team approach really proved to be critically important because I believe that the accountability, the trust, the set of practices, it drove each individual onto greater individual success. And of course, this is a results-based business. And we had each individual outperforming themselves but the impact was bi-directional. We didn't just have a set of better performing individuals because each of these better performing individuals also in return fostered a performance culture within the squad. And what developed was a superstructure of trust, belonging, accountability, and support. And the more experienced and higher performing level athletes among the team became mentors helping the newer or developing athletes. And the incoming and young athletes got the benefit of fast tracking the adoptions of what we believe were the universal habits and approaches, and as well, accelerating the journey to their own individual personal positive results. Now this had a long tail impact because we started to get better retention. Remember I talked about the long-term coaching relationships. Well, our retention of athletes really improved because the Purple Patch Pro squad members were really hesitant to drop off. As soon as we saw someone drop out of the squad, it was quite common that their performance declined. They decided to depart and results ended up getting worse. And this wasn't because they were a bad athlete. And it certainly wasn't because I had some superpower or magic pixie dust. But I believe it was because they lost the team environment and all of the benefits. They stepped out of the performance culture. And so ultimately, we benefited from individuals driven to greater success, but a team firing on all cylinders, setting a culture that established ingrained belief and almost predictable positive outcomes across all of its members. And what started to occur was an undeniable virtuous circle of high performance. And ultimately, that's had an imprint on Purple Patch as an organization. It permeated down to the broader Purple Patch athlete base, the amateur athletes, who could look up and be inspired and more easily adopt those same habits, adapted and applied to their own time-starved life. Now, I tell you, that this virtuous circle of team performance, these concepts absolutely apply outside of elite sport. In fact, our sport that we're discussing here, the Purple Patch Pro Squad, it's just the vehicle, but you can apply it to any venue, no matter what your goal is. And ultimately by deploying a team mindset, the results improve and they have a greater impact with a team approach, no matter how individual you think the pursuit or your job is. So for today, one final word, practices. And this I think is a third really important phrase that we wanna dig into a little bit. In a world where there is so much focus on training methodology, equipment, 
let alone the myriad of quick fix tools, gadgets, supplements, quackery. I believe a common set of practices and soft skills really helped support and drive long-term individual and collective performance. At the baseline of this was our methodology. And that methodology was the four pillars of performance. And very simply put, that was an equal emphasis and focus on the endurance training that the athlete had to do, in this case, swim, bike, and run. Integrated strength and conditioning, practices in nutrition and hydration, and a commitment to recovery. Those four pillars acted as an educational and philosophical framework for each individual pro athlete to operate in. And they help establish sustained platform of really good health and vibrancy. And ultimately, despite the demands of the rigorous training they had to adhere to, these athletes stayed, as we like to call it, fit and fresh. We got there by working our tails off, but also committing to practices in recovery and nutrition, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And the outcome, individually and collectively, was great resilience the ability to adapt and sustain commitment year after year after year. And that's how we broke the plateau curse. We kept athletes on the performance progression curve. But beyond this methodology were the other practices, the genesis of this word that we're focusing on. Because we really aimed as a coaching team, myself as a leader, to develop each athlete with practices that would foster their own effectiveness, big picture thinking, adaptability, coachability, a series of critical soft skills, if you want to call it that. And so some of the components that we can talk about here were our model of the coaching process, where we went through with each athlete to ensure that we could define alignment, focus, clear expectations and clarity so that as athlete and coach, we could be unified and clear in what we were going to focus on, and perhaps most importantly, what we would not focus on. And then we would have the tools and approaches to help each athlete with assessment, re-engagement, so that they can continue on with their cycle. We also had every athlete retain a practice of what we called the Sunday special, something I referred to at the top of the show. And that was designed as a tool to help big picture thinking, or another way, perspective, and to ensure that the athlete entering each week of training had focus and prioritization and a distinct appreciation of when it was really important in each week to proverbially show up. And equally to that, other opportunities where they didn't have to have quite so much focus. And that helped create a really good prioritization exercise, the ability to show up when it counts, but also the ability to ride the wave and stay consistency consistent when maybe it doesn't. On top of that, we aim to empower each athlete with really consistent education. And I think this is really important. It was never enough for me to tell an athlete what to do. Instead, the mission was consistently throughout all 15 years was to educate every athlete on the why. Why are we trying to do this? And this took time. It was an investment. But I felt it was critical to educate and get buy-in and commitment. It also helped foster, as an athlete started to understand the process, the mission, it really helped the athlete self-manage and make smart decisions for themselves. Finally, as we think about soft skills, we aim to improve the coaching process through guidance and learning on how to provide feedback, but also how to receive feedback. And seemingly simple, this proved to be a critical component to develop trust, clear communication, accountability. Now these processes, these soft skills of development, they were ongoing, never ending. And in fact, they were really quite simple. And the nice thing that we learn is that improving these tools and adopting them around communication, self-management, tools of effectiveness and prioritization, they're very, very trainable and they're not overly complicated. But I believe that they were truly powerful in driving the results over time. And so when you read the webpage, 
as you finish the show. Enjoy the story, draw the lessons, but I want you to think about three common words, becoming, team, practices. Next time you seek the answer through looking at a set of workouts that a coach prescribes or some quick fix solution that's promised to you, realize this, sustained high performance is seldom something that is earned by accident. It is established by a common mindset and a set of simple practices and habits. Now in this story that we talk about, the vehicle is professional athletes. But I bet as you listen today, you are well smart enough to join the dots to your own performance journey. I'm sure that you realize that these practices, these traits, these habits are easily applicable across venues, no matter what your role or pursuit is. And so I hope that helps. Have a read of the webpage. Remember, it's under the education tab, it's methodology. If you want it, purplepatchfitness.com slash hour dash methodology. It's a lot of fun. Barry will put it in the show notes. And of course, please feel free to share this episode if you find it useful. And a favorable review also helps. All right, gang, see you next time. Take care. Guys, thanks so much for joining and thank you for listening. I hope that you enjoyed the new format. You can never miss an episode by simply subscribing. Head to the Purple Patch channel of YouTube and you will find it there and you could subscribe. Of course, I'd like to ask you if you will subscribe, also share it with your friends. And it's really helpful if you leave a nice positive review in the comments. Now, any questions that you have, let me know. Feel free to add a comment and I will try my best to respond and support you on your performance journey. And in fact, as we commence this video podcast experience, if you have any feedback at all, as mentioned earlier in the show, we would love your help in helping us to improve. Simply email us at info at purplepatchfitness.com or leave it in the comments of the show at the Purple Patch page and we will get you dialed in. We'd love constructive feedback. We are in a growth mindset, as we like to call it. And so feel free to share with your friends. But as I said, let's build this together. Let's make it something special. It's really fun. We're really trying hard to make it a special experience. And we want to welcome you into the Purple Patch community. With that, I hope you have a great week. Stay healthy. Have fun. Keep smiling, doing whatever you do. Take care.